how can you not love the history that is in Seville? From the streets to the buildings, it's like there's a story around every corner of this amazing city. Whether day or night, walking around Seville is an experience. And if I'm saying that, then you know this city has to be awesome. The history here is captured in the most beautiful ways, and one of which is food. And what better way to see where history and food meet than by visiting the oldest restaurant in Seville. What it do, my moochins? So we are here today. I know you're waiting for the good morning. It's coming, don't worry. I can hear you saying it yourself, the program. Anyway, we're here at El... I do not know how to say this name. Oh, uh, come on. You I do not. Ricon Ricorleone. Ricorleone. Almost there. Ricorleone. Ricorleone. But are you Italian now? Ricontillo. <laughs> Ricontillo. Ah, me español. Oh, see, now you just messed me up. Anyway. Anywho. This is the oldest restaurant here in Sevilla. And we're getting some jamón, as you can tell. I love my jamón. And I hope you like jamón too. Now, uh, mm. Oh, yeah. This is something about ham. I'm sorry. Lo siento. Jamón. Mm. It is so good. And this is like one of the... You said this is one of the best qualities of ham? Yes, it's the Iberico de Bellota. Iberico de Bellota? De Bellota. De Bellota. I believe there is only one kind that is superior to this one. Just one. So, so this is the top. So this is the second best right here? Yes. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. The top of the top is called pata negra. Pata negra? Yes. It sounds kind of racist. <laughs> but I can tell you this ham is delicious. It definitely tastes like a um, second best right about now. Because now I'm curious about how that first one tastes. You can see the, like the stiffness in it. But that's just goodness all over it. That's what it is. It's pure goodness as it breaks apart right there. Oh, yeah. See, it's, like, it's real stiff. And like you feel it as you chew it, but the flavor and that jamón taste is so good. Mm. Good morning. So guys, I can't stop smelling this ham. It just reminds me of my childhood. It's so smoky and... <sighs> so this ham is curated and it's the second best as Lila's was saying. And one could argue that this could be the best of the best. Uh, but anyway, I love how thin it is. Look at that. It's like a really thin um, piece of ham. And once you put it in your mouth with all the grease and everything, it literally dissolves into your mouth. Mmm, so good. Now, while we wait for the food, let me tell you, we had a tour around the whole building. And it was amazing to see how old and how much history is in here. So this building has been here since 1670. And this year, they're celebrating the 350 years. That's insane. That's almost four centuries in this same place. Now, one of the things that they actually kept as original is their flooring. The flooring has been here since day one of this building. And it's just so beautiful and like, I feel like I can travel in time. All right, so one of the first dishes is here. One second. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm being told by my uh, Spanish control room that this is called pavilla. 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 I have no idea what this is. I just got told the name. It is hot, though. It looks like uh, fish and chips, honestly. I know what does it smell like? I don't know what it smells like. Oh, it's soft. This looks crunchy, but it's so soft, too. It does smell like fish and chips, though. It does. Or like one big ass chicken nugget from McDonald's. Uh, this is take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, man. I can't think of the name. It reminds me of something else. It's, all right, so there's so much crunchiness on the outside, but it's not a hard crunch. It's one of those, like, nice, as you can see, like, really soft and, and fluffy, but the crunch is, like, I don't know how you do it, like that, like fried fish and chips. Get that, look at that bite cams. Hear that. Yeah. I don't know what is inside though. Is this fish? Yes. <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh my gosh, it is fish. Thank goodness. I felt meat and I'm like, okay, this 
I'm hoping it's fish because it doesn't taste like chicken. And I know it ain't beef. You're like, this fish, this meat, it smells like fish. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what animal this is at this point. <laughs> so since I'm not a savage like Lila's, I actually use my fork and my knife. <laughs> oh, that's real nice. Yeah, I've seen you eat some. You're trying to act different. Whatever. So the good thing about Seville is that it's one hour away from the ocean, from the world, well, from the sea. And so the uh, seafood is super fresh here. So it's, even though Seville is in the interior of Andalusia, you get to try a lot of great fish here. And the fried fish is one of the top expertise. And with that, the pavia. The pavia is made of cod, so it's super soft. Mmm, but super crunchy outside. Mmm. That breading fried thing in the outside, is to die for. I'm sure that it's made with like organic eggs. Mm -hmm. mm. So many things that in Spain we only eat paella and seafood, but it's true. Trust me, it's true. <laughs> but so far from reality. Actually, one of the best meals that you can have here in Spain, in any corner of Spain, is a stews. We have chickpea stews, we have um, bean stews, we love our stews. And so you will find a lot of chickpeas place, uh, plates all over Spain, but this one particularly is typical from Seville and is called um, spinach with chickpeas, spinacas con garbanzos. And here is, uh, in this restaurant particularly, is the oldest dish that they've been cooking since the beginning of time. How cool is that? I don't like spinach at all. I'm not Popeye. I, I, oh, it smells like. Oh, it doesn't smell like food. <laughs> what no. does that mean? <laughs> oh. It has a little minty kind of like smell to it. It's like uh, you know when you cut wood, that smell of like wood being cut with mint. That's what it smells like to me. Oh, this ain't gonna go down well. Let me just make a take a smaller piece, I'm sorry. And let me grab a chickpea in there, because I, I can mess with chickpeas. You barely took any spinach in there. Oh. I'm going to try it again. One second. Oh, it didn't... The spinach, is, it tastes exactly how it smells. I thought through Mark. Not a just for me. Oh. This is not a dish for me. The chickpeas taste great. The spinach, on the other hand, oh no. It tastes like something. <laughs> it just tastes so, it's wet, but it tastes dry. And I know that makes no sense, but it still tastes like, like cooked wood, minted wood. That's what, that's what it is to me. Like someone made a stew, threw wood in there, and some mint, mint leaves, and done. And then, you know, sprinkle some chickpeas in there and some bread. I'm not, not a fan right now. Not a fan. At all. Lailas is ridiculous. Don't pay attention to him. Thank you. I know what it is. All right, so for those that don't know, Spain was conquered by the Moorish for a long time. And actually this restaurant has a lot of recipes that have been a mix of like Moorish or Mozarabe cuisine with the Spanish Andalusian cuisine. And this one has all the spices of the north of Africa. It's very spicy. Not in terms of like hot, but the spices that you know you will smell in this area, you will feel them. So that's why it tastes so earthy. And I think that that's what is turning him off, but it's absolutely delicious. Okay, so this is like the excellent dish in this region. And you can find it almost everywhere in Spain, actually. As a matter of fact, three years ago, we had Carrillada almost every single day here in Spain, whether we were in Asturias, Salamanca, or Sevilla. And every time that we have had Carrillada this year, which it has been a couple of times, Laila's always asked the same question. What's the name of this again? <laughs> Carrillada. Carrillada. 
How did he act? I feel like, feel like it's like an evil villain who's made in Spain or something like that. Oh, there he is! Cariara! But you always ask what it is. Why you can't I kid remember? You, I kid you not. Every time I ask her what this meat is called, she gives me a different name and always say, oh, it's the meat that we ate last time we was in Spain and got sick. And I'm like, how come it keeps, the names keep changing? This is the first time I'm hearing the name Cariara. Not true. I oh. <laughs> it's so true. But look at this. Anyway, look at the meat. It just breaks. Look at that. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's the stuff right there. You see that? You see that right there? That's called happiness. That's no, what. It's called <laughs> Pure happiness. Mm, that's the. Ooh, yeah. And I'm eating with my left hand, so I know I look weird. Mm, mm. The meat, so tender, but it has a good, um, great texture to it. Oh, this dish smells amazing. Oh yeah. Can you see that? Can you see all the happiness right there? You see all the happiness just floating right there. Look at it. Happiness. Oh yeah. Mm. Literally tastes pure joy. So it's pork meat. Mm. Oh it is? Oh yes. pork meat, that's right. That's right, that's pork. I don't think you guys ever knew about the time you got sick. Don't go check out those old videos though, because it's embarrassing. Mm. Oh we actually have a few videos of it. We're yeah. Doing. Mm. We're doing. I'll put the card above. Don't put the card. <laughs> ignore that card. I know it's showing right now. Just ignore it though. But guys, this meat here. This is what I've been waiting for. All of this here that you see. And it comes with little fries here as well. Oh yeah, I'm just grabbing another piece. Steal that for me. So what I love the most, yes, I know I'm an alcoholic, but what I love the most about traditional Spanish restaurants is that they bring you a liquor after the meal and it's completely complimentary. So this one, it says that it's elaborated in one of the oldest convents here in Seville and it's a aguardiente of anise, which I don't know how to translate right now, but I know it's going to be really good. This reminds me of the uh, rakia. Yes. <laughs> no, not the rocky, actually. Rocky. Rocky from Turkey. From Turkey. It's the same thing. It's I like, mean, it's not the same thing. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. I don't like. The, I don't like licorice. I know I've been saying a lot of things I don't like in this video, <laughs> and that just makes me look bad. But damn it, I'm honest. Oh, oh, so I'm like, oh, you know. Tastes like the licorice. Oh. It does. It has the same um, first ingredient. Outside, oh, it burns. <laughs> Outside, the licorice taste is nice. If it didn't taste like licorice, this would be perfect. It has like a sweet candy kind of taste, warming, fire in your chest, a good, a good drink. Everything else besides the taste makes it a good drink. Oh, like I want to drink it again because it's so sweet and nice, but then when that licorice taste comes in, it makes me regret every decision I made. You know you like it. I like it for every other reason besides the taste. How does that even make sense? Because it's, it's smooth, it's nice and um, it feels cool when it goes down, but then, it, then that fire comes back up. You know, a good, good strong drink. And it's sweet. It's sweetness, like a, almost like a syrup kind of sweet. But then that licorice comes in, like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> what you want to do now? And I'm like, nothing. Get the hell out. <laughs> so it is definitely time for a siesta. I am ready for a nap at this point. Is this a place you should come to for the food? Absolutely. The meat, the food was good. Maybe not that Spanish, that, I must say Spanish dish. Not that spinach. But besides that, the fish and chip style food dish was good. The meat was delicious. And I forgot what else we had. The jamon. Oh my gosh, the jamon. That, I'm not going to forget that. And I'm dying to try that number one now, which one had the, the best taste to it. Now, outside of the food, even if you're not hungry, this is definitely a great place to see, to experience, just to see the atmosphere in here. I know it's different now because of, you know, COVID situations, but it's definitely one of those beautiful restaurants that feels like you walk through time as you're sitting here in every different space of the room, seeing the jamon, 
hanging from the ceiling, the wine bottles, and the other bottles filling up all around the area. The tile, the texture on the walls, the paintings, the pictures, even the flooring. Everything in here is definitely something that you would want to come just to check out. It's in a very good area and a very good spot where you can just hang out at and enjoy a good beer or some tapas. Or some tapas. Tapas are cheap. I like tapas. <laughs> Alright guys, so unfortunately we live in times of COVID and it's kind of frustrating because I would love to show you this place packed and with like people screaming and like talking loud and the bar full of people because that's the traditional way here in Spain. We stand up by the bar and we eat there with our friends. That's where we talk to the waiter, to ourselves. It's just a whole experience. Unfortunately, we can't see that happiness happening right now. Happiness happening. <laughs> but it's such a beautiful thing and I hope you all come during non-COVID times to spend that time. It sounds like there's tons of people here. Well, it's not true. It's people at the most. Yes, we're just loud here in Spain. We like to speak out of our lungs. <laughs> anyway, yes. Make sure to come during some safe times where you feel safe to come outside and to go and enjoy this kind of atmosphere. It's not packed. I know it sounds like a lot of people here, but it's not. And I guess, guys, give this video a like if you enjoyed the food, if you like the history of this place, if you love Seville and Spain, Seville and Spain, definitely give it a like. Subscribe to Travel More with us, and as always, remember to live the life you want, love the life you live, and travel, son. Muchas out! Tell me these things. That's what I was gonna ask. This, this, this is what happens when you get a new video out before we get the video. Anyway, I didn't know they have this out here. What kind of fish is this though? Now, now here comes the crazy part. Okay. Here comes the crazy part. I, I see, I'm starting to learn now. What kind of fish is this? Bacarao. Bacarao? What is a bacarao? That sounds, that sounds like uh, my kind of people, you know, bacarao. You know, I don't know what the means out there. What is it? Cod. Cod? Oh, it's cod. That's what they use in some fish and shit. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not grossed out yet. Just need some sauce to dip this in, and then it'll be good, real good. I know how to question these things now, because I thought it was, when I realized the meat was fish, that's a little too simple. I had to fr find out what type of fish it was, because when you eat with Maria, these things you don't know. I let her decide the dish, and for all I know, that fish could have been shark dick, for all I know. And that wouldn't have been good for me. But anyway. Shark. Anywho. I'm sorry, guys, that I'm being honest. I'm just being honest with you guys, because... I'm not gonna like every meal I have, and I know some people like spinach and people love chickpeas, and this might taste great for you. It doesn't work for my my uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My ignorant palate. You know, it's it's very limited in what it accepts. I guess I can't get past that. Mm -mm. I just can't believe you don't like it as much as you like Turkish food. It has that taste of the spices. Do not, do not, do not <laughs> disrespect the Turkish food. Ah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, one drink to the next, right? I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I read that this has anise, I got so excited because I totally remember Raki and I love Raki in Turkey. So for all our Turkish followers, I know you will love this. It's an aguardiente of Raki and I don't know how to translate aguardiente. Maybe because I had too much alcohol already. How don't you love this? It's perfect, it's not even burning inside. Oh my God, it's such a subtle uh, taste of the anise. You can actually taste the sweetness of whatever fruit is in there because I can't translate the fruit right now, but it's like a, a berry, it's kind of a berry. 
it tastes stronger. I mean, it smells stronger than what it tastes. The anise taste is not that strong as Lila's is telling you, so don't let him fool you. Oh, this is delicious. I know Lila's has this concept that I'm an alcoholic, but seriously, I will drink this even if I was 10 years old. Okay, that doesn't sound good. But you know what I mean, it's like a sweet syrup. That's what it tastes, like a sweet syrup. Cheers. You heard her say it, right? You heard her say that, right? She's an alcoholic. It's not because I'm saying it, it's because you guys see it. We all see it. Oh, you're back. <laughs>